So this camera can shoot 8K 60 frames raw, 4K 120 frames raw. It has a full frame sensor with impressive autofocus. So why haven't more people made a video about this camera than Nikon Z9 for video making? So you know what? Let's bring this camera to South Africa. Let's shoot a lot of video in Nikon RAW and see how good this is for traveling and documentary films. We had already shot two music videos with the Nikon Z9. So I was curious to see how well this camera is for traveling and documentaries. Nikon was eager to sponsor this project as it would be 10 days of traveling and quite a lot of post-production. So keep in mind, this is not a review of the camera, but me showing how good the camera is through footage, through facts about the camera, and also through some post-production examples. We're going to shoot in four different scenarios. Traveling, nightlife, nature, and animals. And shoot everything handheld with autofocus, auto white balance, shooting in Nikon RAW, and of course using different lenses. Let's go. Let's start off with some basic walk in the city shots. Here I used the Nikon 35mm lens with aperture f1.8, shooting mostly with a wide open aperture, handheld. The camera has a built-in sensor shift 5-axis stabilizer. I will have it turned on the whole time with normal mode in all shots. If any of the shots are stabilized in post, I will add a text to the clip so you can easily see which one it is. When you shoot with Nikon RAW, you can choose high quality or normal. We decided to shoot with normal compression, as that is about half the size of high quality. In file size, 4K Nikon RAW 25 frames, in normal quality, is about 2.5 GB per minute. And here are some 4K 120 frames per second slow motion clips. What we realized after the first day of shooting was that you really have to make sure that you don't overexpose. The camera has about 12.5 stops of usable dynamic range. Use zebra stripes to see what is overexposed and clipping in the shot. Because if it's first clipping on the camera, you can't get it back in posts. I realized that it's much better to pull up the shadows in post than to lose the highlights. When looking at the footage in the editing software, I really want to grade it and stabilize it and all that stuff, but at the same time, I don't want to do it because I want to show you guys how the footage looks ungraded. I only applied some color correction just for the brightness and contrast. If I do grade or stabilize in post, I will add a text at the bottom of the uh, corner of the, of the footage so you guys know. Again, I really want to grade it and do stuff with it, but at the same time, I think it's the best if I don't do it so you guys can see how it looks almost straight out of the camera. Here we are inside an analog film store and it has mixed lighting. We have daylight from the windows and LED lights with a bit warmer color temperature inside. As mentioned, I'm shooting everything with auto white balance to see how good it is and to see what we can do with 12-bit Nikon RAW in post if the colors are a bit off in camera. Straight off the camera, it doesn't look too bad. And with some fine tuning in DaVinci, it looks even better. I will come back to post-production in the end of this video. Here we are climbing a mountain and I wanted to easily climb it with a team and shoot good shots without delaying the group. I'm using the 28 to 75 mm lens with aperture 2.8 to quickly vary the shots from wide-angle landscape shots to close-ups of Matthias being frightened. This is so scary. <laughs> we have not that much time until the sunset, so we need to be quite quick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The 
past 15 years I only shot with manual focus, but now, as autofocus gets better and better, you can actually do shots that would be pretty hard doing with manual focus. However, you have to get used to the autofocus, as there are tons of settings, and you don't always know how the camera thinks. Here I tried to use the default autofocus settings, and as you can see, it went a bit back and forth. If the autofocus detects people, it locks itself very nicely to that person. What a journey. <laughs> it, it took us uh, 52 minutes actually. Oh, that's fast. Yeah. But for shots without people or animals, you can override the focus by pulling the focus manually or press the LCD screen to track any object. The body of this camera is a bit bigger than the Sony A1 and the GH6, so it's a bit heavier as well. The full frame sensor, the powerful hardware and the big battery is what makes it bigger and heavier than other typical mirrorless cameras. The battery is actually extremely good and lasts a whole day of shoots. We can also charge it using a power bank with USB-C. When it gets dark, the autofocus might struggle, so keep that in mind. The Z9 is also a very powerful still camera, so we tried to shoot some stills during our trip as well. We also decided to shoot some of the shots in 8K, especially those with a lot of details. Here we are at Cape of Good Hope, one of the most southern points of the African continent. We brought the 800mm f6.3 VRS lens for this shoot. As optimistic and ambitious as I am, I tried to track birds with the animal tracking setting, while shooting handheld in 4K 120 frames per second with the 800mm. I did fail a couple of times, but then To show you guys how fast the bird was actually moving, here it is in normal speed. When shooting animals, of course, you need a tail lens, except if you shoot your cats, which I've done a lot of times, because animals get scared. So bring a tail lens and the 800mm was perfect for this. Filming the ocean and the waves will often show you how much compressed the video is, the bitrate because there's a lot of moving details in the waves with bright colors. If it was a low bitrate, you'd probably see some pixels, mushy quality in the, in the details, but this looks quite good. Shooting with the 800mm is quite interesting, it gives you some new perspectives, uh, the background gets bigger, the whole, it looks like everything is really close to each other. So when we decided to film the moon with the 800mm, we can make the moon look really big. How we managed to create this moonshot is actually quite interesting, as it took some time planning. 
You can see how we made that moonshot in a behind the scenes video we made. I'll link to it in the end of this video. Now let's bring the 50mm lens f1.2 to Cape Town. I wanted to focus on filming people and see how well the autofocus would help me capturing interesting moments without interrupting people. Even with Aperture 1.2, the lens managed to keep people's eyes in focus. It was actually a really fun experience, where I could just focus on the framing and the camera movements. It was like having an extremely good focus puller with me. When you bring the camera with you all the time, you get used to it. So then it's fun to try to experiment with some cinematic shots on the go. We went to this cafe and I, I saw Matthias drinking his smoothie and I just improvised this shot. I ended up actually doing it for every person in our team. It's a fun little project. The autofocus, the full frame sensor and the raw codec made it easier to get cinematic shots on the go. The Nikon RAW codec doesn't denoise the footage, so when filming low light shots, you might think about using the denoise in DaVinci Resolve. I'm very used to Premiere Pro, so it was a pity that this Nikon RAW codec does not work in Premiere. I did talk with Nikon about it and they didn't have any news about it either. But the files do work perfectly in DaVinci Resolve. And if you want to edit your videos in Premiere Pro, the camera does actually create HD proxy files. And this is very convenient as you can edit your video or film in Premiere Pro and then export an XML file to DaVinci Resolve. We did use this workflow in our previous YouTube video. Just make sure that you change the frame rate of all clips in Premiere Pro to 25 frames per second, if that's the frame rate for your final film. 
and then do the same when you import in DaVinci Resolve, as this will make sure that the slow motion files don't get offline in DaVinci. In DaVinci, you have this tool to adjust the raw settings. You can change the white balance, choose gamma, and start playing around with colors. It does feel really good knowing that the material is raw 12-bit, so you have a lot to play around with in post. We decided to edit our video from South Africa in Premiere Pro, then color grade in DaVinci, and then send the files back to Premiere Pro for last touches such as sound editing and stabilizing using the warp stabilizer effect which is, in my eyes, much better than the Stabilizer in DaVinci Resolve. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out the last episode of Making a Film Company, where we show the whole travel to South Africa, actually filmed with Nikon Z9. You can press somewhere up here. And also check out the video about the moonshot, where we used the 800 mm to create this huge moon behind us. You can press somewhere here, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Hadra!